Sure. Hi guys, Heidi from Wellness Mummy. How are you all? It's Friday. I'm excited. I like Fridays. Anyway, tonight is a really, really quick workshop because it's Friday and I'm sure you've all got so much more exciting things to do than learn about slow cooking. But tonight I wanted to teach you guys, first of all, I want to first of all ask you guys, has anybody cooked anything um, from it? I've had some amazing texts and messages and Instagrams and things of people that have cooked things. So if you have cooked things, I want to know how they turned out. Hi, Marsha. How are you? I want to know how they turned out. Now, second of all, you'll see if you saw before I posted the video of the chicken veggie pasta, it was a little bit runny for me, so I thickened it. And that's what the teaching points tonight are about is um, how to thicken your things. Sometimes you'll cook it and you'll, you know, overestimate it, how much water you'll need and it's a bit runny and you want it thicker. So, corn flour's a winner. You just get a little bit of corn flour, add cold water to it, not hot water because it goes gluggy. Put cold water in and make like a paste, a smooth paste, and then you can either get some of the broth or the soup or whatever you're cooking in the slow cooker, out of the slow cooker, and put, you should see my hands, they're all waving around like I'm hip. Sorry, got distracted. Got some of the spaghetti stuff out. Put a little bit of the hot liquid in, give it a stir and pop it back in. Hi, Nicole. And then pop it back in and give it a stir. Now, this will take about 10, 15 minutes, depends if it's on a high or low. And it'll just thicken it, just gives it a little bit more body. Now, another way that you can thicken things, which is a really cool idea that my mum, got a crock pot here, mum told me about was you can actually grate some potato. So depending on what you're cooking, that won't suit every recipe. But if you're making a soup or something like that and you want to thicken it up, you can just get the grater and just grate some potato into it. And um, the potato will swell and thicken it up. Now another one that I use a lot, even in like my stove cooking, if I want to thicken something, is almond meal. It's amazing. I don't know why it swells or what goes on but it also gives us this really creamy consistency so um, if you're making let's say a soup or a white sauce kind of pasta so a pasta that was more brothy that you were going to cr add cream to um, even something like the soup the split pea soup we made the other night um, if you were going to make something like that and you wanted to thicken it um, you could definitely add that helpers have come now they were watching my little pony and I was like does anyone want to help and they're like nah they're over it hope you're not all over it say hello hi so excited okay so that's thickening things now tonight I'm well I have to say so tonight's dinner that I'm putting in will obviously be for tomorrow night and tomorrow night we're hitting the town we've got date night well, no, we're actually going to the local footy club for footy club night, but anyway. Um, and so I'm cooking something that um, Trav and I won't be home for dinner, but I still wanted to obviously do a workshop tonight and show you guys that sometimes you can prepare ahead. So tonight I'm putting in uh, lamb into the slow cooker. Now, roast lamb in the slow cooker, quite honestly, so, now some people don't like lamb. You can do this with beef. You can do it with chicken as well. I need your help in a sec. Is that okay? Um, you can do it with uh, soup and... Uh, working for me today you can also do it with um chicken is pop it in and the meat falls off the bone quite literally you will just lift the bone out of the slow cooker lamb shanks are amazing and i've got a fantastic recipe that's going to be in the book next week when it comes out for lamb shanks and this is you know what it's a little bit fancy some of the ingredients um when i first started to cook it i had to buy but they're dried herbs they don't go off so they're still in there but like think star and a how you say it not sure anyway um so tonight we're doing a really really quick roast lamb i'm going to put this on tomorrow once it's cooked i'm going to shred the meat off and i'm just going to make a lamb pizza for the kids tomorrow night so and the leftover i'm just going to make into a curry for dinner on Sunday, that's the next day, isn't it? Sunday night. So, let's do it. Let's just do this lamb thing. Now, I have to tell you a story. I went to Coles this afternoon to buy a leg of lamb, and I got really excited, and I was with Ella, and we were like, which one? This one. Get the lamb. Got home. Cleaned the slow cooker to get ready for tonight, and the leg of lamb was quite literally half a centimeter too big and would not fit in the slow cooker on a Friday night could have cried. I may have stamped my feet a little bit. And I was like, mom, what are you doing? Oh, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, so I joined the peak hour traffic and I headed all the way back to Coles. And this time I got smaller ones. So that's good. So there's a teaching tip. 
make sure you check before you buy the lamb. Okay, I'm going to turn this around and I have got a helper called Hamish who's going to help me hold this so I can show you what I'm going to do to the lamb. Okay. Maybe. Sorry. Okay. Here we have, now lamb goes amazingly, like super duperly with rosemary and garlic. And that is quite literally all. Now something that I do do, if we're gonna have some like, let's say it's summer and we're having lamb wraps. Um, I bought two because they're on sale and I thought I can, you get a couple of meals and lunch on Monday. That's why there's so much meat there. And let's hope they all fit in the slow cooker too. Okay, so let's say, um, I can't remember what I was gonna say. Oops, okay. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Sometimes in summer, we'll do like a Greek salad do slam in the slow cooker and then we'll get like wraps and do like Greek lamb wraps. Careful of that buddy, it'll fall down. Greek lamb wraps. So sometimes I just get this Greek seasoning or Master Foods and I'll shake it onto the lamb with a little bit of oil and then I just massage it into the meat and pop it in the slow cooker and that's all I do. Quite literally that oil and meat in the slow cooker but tonight we're actually going to put some garlic into the meat because it flavors it just really really beautifully and we're also going to put some rosemary so I'm now going to get Hamish do you want to get a little chair to stand on just so you're above the food thanks honey Hamish is just going to grab a chair so that you guys can see um, what's happening you're right good work okay so Hamish is the cameraman tonight thank you buddy because mummy's going to use a knife and you can't use the knife. Pop up. That's okay. Okay, so you want to see what mummy's hands are doing. Is that alright? Okay, excellent. That colour, you know I'm polished. Okay, so onto the meat here. What I'm going to do, I've cut up some garlic and qu quite literally this garlic was like garlic on steroids. Can you see that? How big these cloves were. Whoa, that's two cloves of garlic. So there's lots of garlic there. Anyway, okay, so I've got the meat. And you've got the side, this is actually boneless because I was not going down that path again of the meat not fitting with the bone. And I figured if this didn't fit, I'd just chop it off. Anyway, okay, so just get your knife and just do some cuts into your meat. Just around the meat. What we're going to do is we're going to push the garlic into the meat. And that, inf when it's cooking, the garlic infuses all the beautiful flavour down into the meat. Now, some people rub their meat with, um, that one's not going to fit in, that's fantastic. Some people rub their meats with different salts and things like that. Quite honestly, I don't use much salt in cooking. Salt's one of those things like sugar that you actually have receptors on your tongue and the more salt you have, the more you need to make that receptor work. So salt is quite addictive as well. Okay, so you can see there I've got a piece of meat and I've just got garlic in it. I'm going to put that bit of meat into the slow cooker. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the other piece of meat. So I'm just going to put, and this is how quick it is. And I've put it into the fatty layer just because that, again, the fat will melt off the meat. So there'll be quite a bit of liquid in the slow cooker when this is finished. Most of it will be fatty, but if you can add um, some, the, the flavor will be amazing. And if you just add some... Um, what we just spoke about thickening so some corn flour paste into the fatty kind of liquid and sometimes I just use a little bit of grey box because it's in the cupboard and it tastes good and just take the meat out while you're chopping the meat put the grey box or the slow cooker stuff uh, the what's that stuff I just said corn flour into the and thicken it you can actually use it as a delicious gravy which is a bonus okay so we've got that so I've put both of those pieces of meat in do you want me to push your chair over? Ready? Hold on. <laughs> so, show it around that. And then I've got some beautiful fresh rosemary that I bought today, and I'm just going to run my hand down it and sprinkle it in. That's it. That's all. And this will be. You're a really good cameraman, Hamish. Can you guys see that? So, maybe if we move. My lighting's really bad in here. 